Hello, bass family, and welcome to Everything Bass. Man, I'm, I'm kind of... There's a negative wave out there on technique exercises. Um, and I can't say that the instructors and the artists who are talking about the negative aspects of, of uh, just doing technical finger exercises, I can't say they're wrong. What I can say is there's a way to make them more valuable. And I talked about this in a previous exercise too, but I want to give you another example. Picking a, an exercise or a technical exercise, but giving it some kind of um, melodic or harmonic intent, something that you're also working on. So instead of just working on your fingering and your you know fretting technique, you're also you know kind of looking at your you know like improving your uh, playability of certain theoretical concepts, learning your fingerboard notes better, and things like that. So we're going to go on with this uh, another technical exercise. Uh, and if you are a Patreon supporter, you can go in the link in the description. It'll take you uh, right to my Patreon page and find the um, post that matches this title of this video and you'll see a download. Um, and if you're just a backstage, you know, if you get the backstage pass membership, you'll be able to download that at no additional cost. Uh, in fact, all of my video uh, content you can get uh, at no cost, uh, additional cost other than the $8 a month. But it will show you this exercise, and then I'll give you some variations on it, um, some things to do to make it more valuable. Because maybe your time, especially uh, if you have other things eating at your time, which we all do. You know, if your career, uh, your career is not in music, um, you're, you know, have family obligations, your day job, things like that. All these things can make the time that you have available to practice, uh, you know, a little more scarce. So we need to compound our time. Take a, a fingering exercise, but then combine it with learning your fingerboard, combining it with harmonic or melodic content. So um, the exercise I was demonstrating at the get-go um, is based on the A Dorian mode. Uh, for these goes, you know, well, you might not know this. The A Dorian is the second mode of the key of G major. Key of G major has one sharp, which is F meaning that A Dorian has one sharpness F. Let's test that theory. A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, A. You notice all the other notes that I said were natural. I got to the F and it's sharp to be able to play Dorian. So when we're doing our exercise, we want to make sure all the notes we're playing are natural, except whenever we come to an F, we sharpen. Now, to make this a more valuable exercise, I also incorporated some string skipping, playing off of an open note. Now I start with the E, even though we're in A Dorian, I start with the E, which is the fifth. It's a really good lead in tone to the tonic. So I go the, the E three times on the A. Now I play that F sharp because we are in A Dorian, which I'm playing the major six of A Dorian. Now I shift my hand up and I play G, F sharp, G, A. Now let's look at the, the melod or the rhythmic phrasing there, if you will. Uh, well, not rhythmic phrasing, melodic phrasing. I'm going, um, I'm playing the E three times on the A. F sharp three times on the A. Now I shift up, but when I start doing the next set of notes, it's one note, one open, one note, one open. So I'm going G, A, F sharp, G, A. Okay, so slowly. Now the reason I'm doing that is it's making my plucking hand figure some things out. You know, the first action I'm playing one time on the G string, three times on the A, one time on the G, three times on the A, and I want to make sure that I'm, as much as I can, I'm always alternating to be a little smoother in my playing. Um, and then I, the second half of the measure, I'm just playing one note on the G string, one note on the A string, G, A, G, like that, bum, bum, bum. So I'm actually kind of rocking my fingers back and forth. I don't know if you can see this. Maybe that's the best is I'm going. So I'm going. It makes it actually very easy to play, um, you know, that kind of large intervallic leap between two strings that aren't neighbors. Um, so anyway, so that's the first measure. Second measure starts the same way. E, F sharp. Now I slide all the way up to my C. And we're doing the same kind of pattern. Is play a fretted note, open. Then I play a B, open, A, 
G open. So I'm playing, you know, uh, in in the Dorian mode, and I'm staying within the Dorian mode, not adding any notes outside, which means I'm diatonic to the Dorian mode, the A Dorian mode. So the whole thing sounds like this. And of course, you'd want to loop it and make sure you're getting from that descending line smoothly back to the one you don't want to there's a phrase um uh in music education called don't hear the repeat when and we as bass players playing any kind of chart a lot of times we'll have a section of music that's just you know says repeat four times repeat eight times whatever and you don't want to hear the repeat meaning you don't want any audible pause or timing glitches between the end of the last measure when you repeat back to the beginning of the first measure of that section so when you come down, you you don't want there to be like, you know, that, that was exaggerated. So you're going to want to try to work out your fretting hand fingering to be the smoothest possible. Now I found when I'm really kind of concentrating on it, I'll play with my pinky on the C, B with the ring finger, index finger on the A. Now instead of just sliding down and playing the uh, G with my index finger, which would then I'd have to slide down again, I make a wholesale change. Now I slide down and play my pinky on the G, so I'm right set up. And that makes it so you won't hear the repeat as much. So there's an exercise working on string skipping, working on shifting, um, of course all the basic techniques of fretting and plucking, things like that. But how do we get more out of it? We do other scales and modes. Um, we apply the same phrasing, but adjust it to fit. Now, let me show you what I mean by that. We're gonna do A Aeolian. Now, Aeolian is the sixth mode. And so in, in A Aeolian is in the key of C major. C major has no sharps and flats. A Aeolian has no sharps and flats. Let's prove it. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. So and you notice to be able to execute A Aeolian, I didn't say any sharps or flats. So all the notes are natural. They're in the same family. They belong to the key of C major. So that means when we're playing this, we're not going to play the F sharp as our second note. We're going to go E, F, automatically darker, which Aeolian's darker because that minor six is very dark. Now, I come up here and I go G, F, G, A. F, C, and, and again, remember, I'm staying in um, A Aeolian, so I'm playing all natural notes. C, B, A, G. All right, so. So hopefully you can see where taking an exercise like this applying a new scale or mode to the exercise being like intentional think about it what notes are changed from the previous thing when i played a dorian i had an f sharp in my lick uh, in the pattern and then when i went to a aeolian the f was natural so i had to adjust that but all the other notes stayed the same you could literally take this exercise and go through all the modes um you it's difficult. People say, can I do it with pentatonics? Well, pentatonics don't, the, the different pentatonics might not have the same intervals, so you'd have to make bigger adjustments. You could, um, but I would put those last so you're really in the groove, and then you'd really have a different, a, a much different exercise. There'd be a lot more shifting involved. So does this make sense? We're, we have a set amount of time to um, devote to practicing. So we take this concept of, okay, I want to work on my technique. I want to warm up. Warming up is excellent. Now, a lot of times I warm up by just sight reading something slowly because I'm working on my reading. And a lot of times I'm not going to read something so challenging technically that I'm going to hurt my hands. So for me, reading is, uh, music is a very great warm up. It also gets my head into kind of the focus for practicing. Um, but yeah, start really slowly, work through these exercises, and anytime, now some, you might have found an exercise or created an exercise on your own. Um, figure out which key it's in, what scale it's based on, and, uh, and then start seeing how you can make adjustments. Because now you're not just practicing a technical exercise, which has just physical benefits. You're exercising your mind, you're focusing, you're saying, okay, like maybe you don't know your fingerboard very well in this range. Well, this exercise at least gets you to know it um, 
you know, on this set of strings. Now, taking it to the next step, you could move the entire thing. You could do it on, with an open E and, and figure out a mode you want to play and start with the fifth of whatever scale you're playing or mode you're playing. So it'd be some form of B, B flat, um, things like that. And, you know, play the exercise and really concentrate on what notes that are there. What, you know, don't just play the pattern. You can do more. You can, you can get more value if you don't just play the physical pattern, but take a moment to figure out those notes and where they are on the fingerboard. That alone will make everything you attempt after this so much easier. If you just know your fingerboard and you have the technical ability to execute ideas, your musicianship will go through the roof, I promise you. So what do you guys think about this? I know I did a video before, but I had come up with this exercise for a student to work on. And I thought it'd be something to share because it gives you another example of how you can apply it from one scalar mode to another, move it around the base, and get more out of whatever time you can dedicate to practicing. Let me know what you think about this. Uh, I'm very curious if, um, in the very least, if this is stuff that you enjoy and you feel gets value, please just give me a thumbs up um, like on the video. I've been kind of using those to show me where I need to focus what my next video. So in any video you see of mine that you go, wow, that's great. I hope he does more of these. Give it a thumbs up because I can actually almost use that as a tally, you know, as a tally going, oh, okay, this video got so many likes. This is something I'm going to expand on and do more of. Uh, and of course, if you could, you know, share, subscribe to the channel. It's amazing. Um, you know, less than half of the people that watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel. I'm, I'm not doing this fi for financial gains, really. It's, it's, um, it's more of a passion project. But if you could subscribe, then you're guaranteed that um, every time I post a video, you'll get notified as long as you, you know, slap that little bell icon next to it and tell them you want to be notified of all the videos I post. I won't wear you out. I post basically twice on the weekend and once on Wednesday, usually. All right. Let me know, of course, if you have any more questions in the comments below. It's great. Just say, hey, I'm, you, you kind of went fast by this section. Could you do this again? All that is in play. I'd love to be able to help you. Um, and personalize these videos more uh, carefully so they really help you with your playing. So my brothers and sisters of bass, thank you so much for stopping by. I look forward to hearing from you, and I'll see you at the next video. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.